Welcome to the Parenting Versus Podcast. Podcast. Mail opening edition. We just got our mail. It's riveting. I know. Ooh, you're pre-qualified for a pre-qualification certificate. It must be official. Ah. Lenda with an A-H. Hmm. Lenda. Uh, Lenda. <laughs> a lot. It sounds, it sounds real. So. Go Lenda. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, and so I don't know if you guys get these, but a lot of times I get these pieces of mail that look like checks, and you're like, "Holy shit, I got a check!" That's what um, I want you to think. It's awesome. Apparently, like, I feel like the mail person was reading all of my travel Oregon magazines that just showed up in one hmm. beautiful thing. Wow, that's yeah. some amazing artwork, actually. I know. I ordered this because I was like, I want to go on a road trip when this is all over. Clearly, we're going to go to Oregon. We're going to take a, a cruise with Sasquatch. Oh, Bigfoot Adventure Cruise. My bad. That guy doesn't even look like he has a costume on. If you guys want to check it out, it's uh, bigfootcruise.com is huh. what they're advertising. <laughs> okay. Wowza. Um, Central Oregon 2020 Oregon Coast Visitor's Guide. Man, they really loaded me up. Portland. Find your Portland. path. Portland. <laughs> find your path. Find your path in Portland. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I'm not scenic. even drinking, by the way. <laughs> Ornic, Oregon, Ornic Scenic Byways. <laughs> Oregon Scenic Byway is the official driving guide. That looks pretty. Columbia Gorge to Mount Hood. Mm. And, um, oh, they sent us the Willamette Valley Oregon Wine Country Guide. Mm, I want to be in that kitchen. I want to be that dog. <laughs> that dog looks like it lives Dude, a better life than I do. Some dogs in Oregon, like, have wonderful lives. Dude, I know, right? They get, like, their organic dog food delivered and, like, spoon-fed to them. Yeah. It's more than I get. Do you know what kind of pisses me off is, like, when you go to the store and you see the dog food that's in the fridge? <laughs> there's, like, and I'm, like, oh, wow, they have, like, there, there's, like, sausage and bacon also. And I, you almost buy it for yourself because it's priced, you know, it's, it's, it's a, there's a premium price. It's not, it's a little bit more pricey than regular old bacon. And then you. Premium dog. And then you realize, oh no, this is dog food. Oh wait, this is not for people. <laughs> Some people love their dogs. Yes, and they're willing to, to pay a premium on bacon that's marketed towards their dogs. So, all right, I'm gonna randomly pick something to tell you guys about, to teach you about today on this episode of Parenting Versus Podcast. There you go. Regarding Oregon, I'm gonna go ahead and go with the Travel Oregon Visitor's Guide. I feel hmm. like that's a good start. Try my drink real quick. Okay, what is it? I just want you to try it. Mm, I know it's rum. Hmm. That's all I need to know. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a ship on here. <laughs> Rum's a sailor's drink. It's true. It's like a dark and kind of cloudy drink. Mm -hmm. Not quite stormy, but yeah, a little cloudy. <sighs> you know, I love you, Oregon. However, this picture of Clear Lake with the trees coming out of the water, I have this weird creeped out fear of trees coming out of water hmm. and okay when i was a kid in oregon we used to go to this camp called camp tamarack tell me about it well it was a camp for kids with cancer and their families because mm -hmm. my brother had leukemia and he was in remission and my parents were the presidents of this nonprofit called candlelighters for uh children and mm -hmm. it was uh they have different chapters in different states you can look them up if you want to in oregon they're a great organization feel free to donate People can mm -hmm. always use... Ryan is the prodigy of all cancer people. Okay. Well, anyway. Um, <laughs> whatever. It's already offend... I didn't mean to offend you. But. No, it's just... I don't want to talk about my brother. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, he's... Had he's his, alive. He, he has enough time. He's, al he's alive, guys. Okay. Let me just tell you a little side note to this story before okay. we get into the nitty gritty. I love you, Ryan. You don't listen anymore, but I love you. He doesn't remember when he had cancer. However, I do. Hmm. I was four. You took the brunt of that, uh, yeah, of that trauma. That tra childhood trauma, yes. He doesn't remember it. I do. Um, Have you asked him about that, though? Like, is it is it true? Yeah, no, he legitimately doesn't remember. Huh. But like I do. Like, none of it? Well, I don't know. Maybe bits and pieces, but he was little. Um, he used to get interviewed for, like, the Oregonian and magazines and newspaper and all this and, like, the news all the time for being a cancer survivor. He was interviewed? All the time. After the fact? Hmm. Yeah. Um, they'd write stories about, you know, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, which is in Seattle, where mm -hmm. he was treated. And so my brother was always kind of like the golden child 
and it was a little bit annoying. Um, however, we used to go to all these camps for kids with cancer and their families and Camp Tamarack was one of them. And there was this lake there and it was very clear, beautiful water. That's in Washington? No, it's in Oregon. Okay. Um, kind of by, you're not going to know what this means, but it's, it was kind of by Kanita. If anybody remembers Kanita out there. It's like outside of Chama. No. (laughs) It's like very outside of Chama. In another state. (laughs) Yeah. Um, water was nice and clear, beautiful blue and green, but you could see these really big fir trees that had fallen Hmm. into the bottom of the lake and you could see them. And like sometimes when you'd be in your canoe, hmm. the branches would like on like the bottom. On the bottom of your canoe? Yeah. And that creeped me out so, so is much. Is that the origin story of your 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 creeped outness of like trees coming out of water? Yeah. I don't like them. I don't want to feel a hmm. branch touching my leg when I'm in a lake. I don't, I don't care about fish. I grew up by a lake. I've had fish bite my toes. I can deal with fish because they're supposed to be there. Well, right. Here's the thing though. Like I didn't know Ugh. your, I didn't know your origin story. I remember we lived in Missouri for a little bit Mm-mm. and we passed by this. Um, uh, it was like a reservoir. It wasn't a natural lake. Mm-mm. It looks like it. It looked like That's they exactly, just. It's just not natural. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I they don't they like it. they dammed a lake. Yeah. Like a big lake, mm-hmm. a, a river, a big river, right. and it killed a bunch of trees. And like the trees, the trees just died, but their branches all remained. Mm-hmm. And I remember you saying like, "I'm so creeped out," and I wondered like, why? Yeah, I don't like trees coming out of water. Like, like the ones that are like not like they're dead, like dead trees coming out of water. I have this weird, abnormal, irrational, creeped outedness about that. Um, so yeah, not a big fan. Hmm. Which, by the way, can we? Can I just paint the picture real quick? Yeah. Of where we are. Okay. So um, you don't hear kids because it's uh, it's late afternoon. It is a. Um, I always have to say like what day it is. It's a Monday. Oh. oh. You spoke too I soon. Oh, you did? Yeah. Great. Oh, okay. Yeah, wonderful. Um, yeah, let's go see. Mom's going to talk about Oregon. Okay. So I'm looking at this. Hmm. I'm holding this phone the right way. Calm down. I'm looking at the Travel Oregon 2019-2020 Visitor Guide. And they have a spot that says Ghost Towns and Quiet Backroads, which... Um, we recently took a, a trip on a to a ghost town here in New Mexico, so I will go ahead and read this part, and you can enjoy along with me. Um, so, ghost towns and quiet back roads, and that's talking about parts of Oregon that I have and haven't been to. So, let's talk about that. It says, the tw- the tranquil roads of the eastern Columbia River Gorge lead to a cachet of back road beauty and hidden small towns. The landscape grows increasingly arid, revealing a backdrop of grasslands, basalt cliffs, and ponderosa pines. Just south of the of historic, the Dalles, as in the city of the Dalles, roads pass through rolling wheat fields and cottonwood lined creeks, routes beloved to cyclists. In Dufer, which I've been to, the historic Belch, Balch, B A L C H hotel, presides over the main drag, and the local museum hosts an annual threshing bee harvest festival in August. And I am going to mispronounce this, I know I am. It's either Maupin or Mopin, I can't remember, M A U P I N. <laughs> is tucked along the Deschutes River and provides a gateway to Central Oregon's rafting, kayaking, fishing, cycling, and stand-up paddleboarding. I have been whitewater rafting in Southern Oregon. Some think of quiet um, Shiniko as a ghost town, but its residents put on a lively annual festival in August. In the abandoned community of Kent, visitors can see, can see the weathered storefronts and shuttered grain mill that remain. The road through Morrow, home to the Sherman County Historical Museum, leads visitors back up onto the plains towards the windy Columbia River Gorge. So they have some really cool pictures. Um, kind of gives you an idea of places you can check out if you're in the Pacific Northwest. And then they also cover uh, a few places in Southern Oregon and culinary tours, if that's your thing. Um, also, small town diversions. So they have a couple of different things like the Oregon Paleo Center, uh, Smith Rock State Park. Wow, there's a lot to see that I've never seen in Oregon. So it's really cool to check this out. I just thought, you know, once this is all over, we are planning on going up to the Pacific Northwest, hopefully with our trailer. Um, And so we kind of wanted to plan some nice scenic uh, stops along the way when we get up there. And then, um, yeah, so I I went full speed ahead with the Oregon Visitor Guide. And I 
I'm going to beef up on my Oregon road trip knowledge before we go <laughs> so that we're ready. Um, but yeah, I think, I think there's going to be some fun things to check out and, uh, and see. They have a whole list of hotels and stops and places to go and things to see. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to this being over. I think we all are. <laughs> yeah, there's our neighbors. <laughs> our neighbors, um, yeah. Anyways. So, so I just read a little bit about um, the ghost towns and like it's like a little off the beaten path kind of guide. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of really cool things here. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, we're going to pause. Hi. Okay, we're back. We're back. And we ate dinner. Mm -hmm. The pizza guy came, that's why we paused. You have some ranch on your shirt. Mm. Did you enjoy your pizza? You can eat that. You can have it for your beard <laughs> if you want it. <laughs> I did, I enjoyed too much pizza. I ordered the, the wrong pizza. So we experienced fallout from our kids. Yeah, God forbid. I wanted to do half without green chili because the kids can't do the spice. But, uh, the kids can't do the spice. They can't. So. But so we were talking about Oregon. Yeah. You were, I read you, a little tidbit. I'm just dreaming about when, you know, this is all over and we can actually take more trips again. Yeah. Hmm. We had two trips actually planned this summer to go to the Pacific Northwest. One to, um, one to Washington mm -hmm. and one to Oregon. Yep. Why do people say... Washington State. I know it's like the con the confusion between like Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. But being a being a person who grew up like in that region, do people there say Washington State or do you just say Washington? Uh, usually we just say Washington. So it's like East Coast people who are like, oh, Washington State, because mm -hmm. they don't want to confuse it with Washington D.C. Yeah, and I think Washington D.C. originally was supposed to be called Columbia. No, so Washington was supposed to be or called Washington Columbia. Washington State? Yeah. Yeah, one of them. So Washington so maybe was... that's why it's... A so here's, the, <laughs> here's what's funny. Um, I don't know where I read this, but Washington was originally supposed... They, they, one of the names that was a, a, a candidate was Columbia, but they didn't want it to be confused with the District of Columbia, mm. D.C. Got it. Um, and now here we are. Everybody says Washington State. Washington. So... Anyways, yeah, it's it's lovely up there. Um, I don't know, but now it's raining still? I'm not sure. Honestly, haven't talked to anybody up there recently. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to think about that right now because it makes me sad that I can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Kind of with you on that. The furthest I've gone in two days is my driveway. Oh, I went to the post office. I take that back. Yeah. So... Um, this uh, weekend, I think it was Sunday, we went shopping for toilet paper. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to do a live podcast. Well, not live, but like I wanted to record it as we were doing it. Mm -hmm. But we didn't. We had masks because the CDC is recommending that you wear masks mm -hmm. um, if you go anywhere like a public place. Yep. We thought we would, we, we thought we would uh, venture to Costco. Like the idiots that we are. Well, I thought, like, some people have told us, so, yeah, Costco is stocked. And I think you can get it online from Costco. And it's only the Kirkland brand, though. The, to the toilet paper, which yeah. is all I buy. Yeah. So maybe we need to look into that more. Yeah. I don't know. <clears throat> but uh, kudos to Costco, by the way. Like, when you walk in, there's a sign that tells you. What they're out of immediately, yeah. so you can just turn around. And, and toilet paper is there, and it's highlighted, actually. Yeah. Like, we're out of this. So uh, we walked in with our masks and uh, like wearing a mask, I, I had like, I'll be honest, like I had to fight this weird feeling. Like I didn't, I, I felt really weird just wearing a mask. 
Like, I didn't want to be seen with a mask. God. Like, that's just... You're and, so weird because to me, I'm like, who cares? Like, Well, I usually don't. I usually don't care. Like, I don't understand. I just, I guess I don't get, like, why it's such a weird thing because literally everybody is wearing them right now. Right? Um, I, I just, I just felt uncomfortable wearing a mask, which is, which is okay. Like, it's not supposed to be comfortable wearing a mask. This is not your normal life. No. Right? But wearing the mask um, initially just put me out of my like comfort zone sort of thing. It was like the first time I wore Jinkos. If that can your, be compared. Your daughter's saying daddy. Mm. I want more spaghetti. I th- is that what she said? I think so. Yep, I want more spaghetti. Okay. There it is. All right. Chop, chop. Make that spaghetti. Do you want to talk or should I pause? Um, let's take another pause break for a minute. Okay. Okay. We'll be back. We'll be back. Okay, we're back. Again. Our daughter has uh, spaghetti, so she's satisfied. <laughs> now she's going to need a bath. <laughs> yeah. No, I told her we're going to have a bath here yeah, in a minute. Bath time. Um, yeah, so it was real for me, like putting on the mask, um, seeing a lot of other people wearing masks. It's just a it, – it seems, and I think that a lot of people are experiencing this, but I, it seems kind of dreamlike to me. Like um, I'm taking pictures of things that are – that are not normal, really. Mm-hmm. Like, and I think a lot of people are doing this too, but I've, I've taken pictures of empty aisles, of signs that grocery stores have put up, like the social distancing signs. Um, I want to take a picture of one of those like uh, glass cages they put around the cashiers, but I don't want to take a picture of a cashier that doesn't want their picture taken. Well, I think at this point we all know what they look like. I mean, right. So it's kind of like we all, we've all seen it. If, you're, if you have to go to the store for anything, you've yeah, probably well, seen it at some we point. We are going to see this now, but like I'm saying like, in 30, 40 years from now, mm. I, wanna, I, I want that picture to be there. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's interesting to us when we see pictures of people who were going through the Spanish flu mm-hmm. pandemic or any sort of historical picture. And I know those pictures will survive. I, I got so pissed at our neighbor today. Why? He pulls up in his big ass Ram truck right now. He's getting in his garage. He has his elderly parents come over and they do his lawn for him. And That's I'm interesting. Like, this is the middle of a pandemic. Like maybe, just maybe, you could like do your own lawn. You're a grown ass man. Yeah. Don't make your elderly parents come out and do your lawn for you, especially during a pandemic. Do you think they like it? I don't know. Maybe there's some backstory. I don't know. It just looks like a real assholeish thing to do. Yeah, on the outside, maybe. Mm-hmm. Maybe Sorry. so. Side note. No, that's okay. Just the things that irk me now. Right. I don't know. I've, I've been having a really weird day. I just feel off. Yeah? Today. I feel like I just want to crawl in a hole and go to sleep for a little bit and wake up when things are starting to be sort of normal or coming back down or... I don't know. It's probably a little bit of cabin fever. Yeah. I feel really antsy today. Like, I can think of a million things that I would have wanted to do today if I could. Yeah. And, like, I can't do any of them. And I realize that's everybody's story. It's not just mine. But it's just, like, today, for whatever reason, was especially hard. I think also because Albuquerque Public Schools started their attempt at educating our children during this via a YouTube channel. And then they're broadcasting it on... um, PBS. Portland or Portland Public Broadcasting and it was kind of I mean I'm not expecting miracles like my neighbor was saying she's like well we're not Mr. Rogers and I'm like that's true I get that but at the same time I don't know I was expecting a little more um organization and effort I guess I mean we've had time to like try to figure this out and then you know you tell everybody school's ending for the year So that puts everybody in one mentality, you know, Mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it's, oh, actually not. We're going to do this instead. And 
you've already like started a routine with your kids and now you have Mm -hmm. to change that routine like with your kids and then it's like you have to explain to them why that's changed like why it's another thing that's not stable right and I think it's just like it's confusing and it's hard for them to understand and it's difficult as a parent to try to get that figured out good you how are you good (laughs) just this is it (laughs) um yeah, so I just think it's hard. I think it's hard to change a sort of established routine yet again mm-hmm. into something. Yes, as, as much, much as, as we, can. we can. I mean, this like <laughs> yeah. we we did some art on our sidewalk, and uh, nice. we're just progress, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's just it's just strange. It's just like strange all around, and that's the thing. There is like there is no normal, so I'm kind of just like, all right, well. Like, there is no normal, so... Who are all these people driving by right now? Who knows? Big-ass trucks full of teenagers and strangers, and... Now I feel like an asshole, because that's the neighbor I was talking about. Yeah. (laughs) He was really nice. I know. I'm just a fake-ass bitch, dude. What? Um, I have front yard. We're sitting in our front yard. We're sitting in our front yard, Yeah, you have spaghetti everywhere. Are you going to take a bath so you can get clean? Did you enjoy your spaghetti? I wiped my face on a piece of napkin. You wiped your face on a piece of napkin. She's okay. like a 180 degree turn after she eats. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I completely, like, let's finish our thought and then we'll bathe mm-hmm. our kids, I guess. Mm-hmm. I completely, like, am with you. Like, my thoughts have been off. My, everything has been off. Like, I have, I've been, like, I, I did a YouTube video. I've been doing YouTube videos. Um, I will not link my YouTube channel. I don't want anybody to see my face. <laughs> Although parenting, we have a parent, we have a yeah, YouTube channel. We do. Um, it's which, pretty sad. Sorry. Yeah. And pathetic. But watch whatever. it if you want. Yeah, I'll link. I'll link our parenting right. um, YouTube. But uh, my toes don't hurt. Your toes don't hurt. Well, that's good news. Yeah. But I have. Um, <clears throat> I've been really sort of pissed off about different things. Mostly people. Yeah. Normally, I don't get pissed off about people mm-hmm. um, and, like, behaviors. But recently, I have been, and I, I video blogged. I vlogged about it. So I, I think it's just sort of – I don't know what it is. Maybe I just have more time to spend with my thoughts. Um, but I, I am attributing it <laughs> – More time to spend with your thoughts? Are you sure? Yeah. What? Can I, can I, can I play, uh, um, uh, can I, can I, I want to play a different game on the computer. We're actually going to do bath time yeah, in we're about do bath five time. minutes. No. Maybe just, we're going to do bath time now. Yeah, just, I think that would be good. Just, okay. Just get me to another pause. game. Okay. Well, this is uh, parenting Hello. versus podcast. We will be right back. Parenting for the win right now. <laughs> days later but here we are <laughs> it's been two days i think so yeah well yeah. parenting life we we do what we can we do what we can the pizza was delicious though yeah <laughs> we've got we got two large pizzas <laughs> i don't know why this is important <laughs> it's not <laughs> this is what our life has been reduced to <laughs> god so um yeah so another day yeah. Another uh, quarantine day. Another quarantine day. I don't know. What, what day is it? Is that is that term correct? Quarantine. I think quarantine. I thought I was under the impression, and I might be wrong. Quarantine is a term reserved for somebody who has a disease and who's been like isolated. Yeah. Like we don't have the disease that we know of. Hopefully not. We are being 
socially and we're, commercially quarantined. We're self-isolating. There you go. I think we were talking to some people yesterday via Zoom, and we were talking about how the phrase um, social distancing is really depressing. Yeah, it so should be like physical distancing. Right. Because we could still be social. Yeah. Yeah. I we don't want to socially people. distance. Like I'll pe- just physically distance. People are social creatures. Like we, we have to communicate with each other. It's like part of our DNA. We need you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, our kids have been um, amazingly clingy and obnoxious the last day Luke or was, so. Luke was off yesterday. And... Towards, like, the middle of the day, I realized, like, yeah, his world's been flipped, turned upside down. Is that a rap song? Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to... Can know. you sing the rest of it? I don't remember it. I'm going to take a minute. Just sit right there. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, he, he he has... His his world is just different. He should be at school with his friends and his teacher in yeah. that in that consistency and that structure... But him and everybody else's lives are completely thrown out of whack. So um, Kids are sensitive to mm-hmm. routine changes, even if they may not seem like it at first. Yeah. I mean, even this morning, like, my four-year-old crawled into bed, and he looked at me and was like, Mommy, I miss my friends. And I was yeah. like, uh, yeah, shot through the heart. Yeah, his life is different, too. And it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, That's another song, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I know. Shot through the heart. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> but uh yeah, Luke, um, one of the first things he did yesterday morning was take a piss on our porch. Mm. Um and I was like, What on earth? Like sometimes What we'll, is happening? Sometimes like we'll be like somewhere out in the middle of the forest or uh, Even in the summer in the backyard, like if they're swimming in the pool, like we'll yeah. be like, Oh, if, you know, there's a like, corner, like there's like Go to that corner over there or, like, whatever. Right. Don't drag your wet ass inside. Right. <laughs> but, no, he was, he just opened the door and went outside and peed. I was like, what gave you the idea that that was a good idea or, like, okay? I think in his seven-year-old mind, he's like, well, everything else is going to crap. I guess yeah. I'll just piss on the porch. Like, so I don't know. It was so that was weird. our day. That's what we started off it with. It was like a robot malfunction. Yeah. <laughs> like, so strange. Breaking the code. Yeah. I don't know. It's been... It's been weird. We've made two batches of chocolate chip walnut cookies in two days. Which Yours came out a lot better, by the way. Well, it's I made I one like mine that. sort of gooey. And Me like, too. Warm. I don't know why. Like mine were like chewy at first, and then the next day it was like biscotti. Yeah, you have to. You have to. I think you have to like time it right, right? Yeah. 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 Um. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we've been making a lot of cookies. Um, we bought a bubble machine on Amazon. Mm-hmm. Like an industrial kind that you'd find at like a wedding reception. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we've been running the bubble machine a lot in our port, like on our, not our porch, mm-hmm. our um, driveway. Driveway. And actually, I've had a few neighbors walking by be like, that's such a cool idea. And yeah. I'm like, we are so desperately bored. You have no idea. There's like, one neighbor who checks the mill. Uh, he's like the older guy mm-hmm. who lives next door to the teenage party house. Oh, yeah. Um, who, Casa de Fiesta. <laughs> God. No. One of one of those teenagers thinks he drives a race car, but it's like a Ugh. it's like a 2010 Honda two door Accord with a with a with a muffler that's just loud. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he's in and out all the time. But I don't think he lives there. So, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm sorry. No, that's it. Just, well, no. So I I <clears throat> sit on the fence a lot with that house, like not the literal fence, but like the that's what I was thinking. the moral fence, if you will. Um, because I was that age once. I was that obnoxious, like, 20-something, having parties at my house all the time and, like, my friends over. And I was, like, on my own. And it was, like, yeah, party, guys. It's now, Tuesday. Now you're the neighbor that's telling your husband, call the cops. <laughs> I know. <laughs> well, and that's the thing. I'm, like, I'm trying to be understanding of, like, their age and time and place in their life. Because I don't want to be, like, a downer. I get it. Like, you're 20, 21. You want to live your life. Fine. Um, I do I don't think, think twenty twenty one. I think they're like high school. No, they had like their prom last year. Oh, so they're like right out of high school. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think an adult lives there, but I think the adult is not home very often. So it's like the kid, the teenage child, or the young youngish adult mm-hmm. living there, and mm-hmm. basically all the friends. I think the parents are like in and out throughout the month, 
I don't know what their situation is, but... Why don't they leave? There's, like, never an adult really there, except for, like, once a month. So I go back and forth about this because I'm, like, if it's a Friday or Saturday, I'm a little more lenient. I'm, like, whatever. It's the weekend. Like... If but we're gets, in a global pandemic. You never experienced that. Right. No, but I'm talking about when things are normal. Uh-huh. Oh, like before? The, right. In the, in the before time. In the before time. Yeah. Um, BP. <laughs> <laughs> before pandemic time. Um, no, I, I'm usually pretty lenient. Like, even if it's a Thursday, I'm like, eh, okay, like, I get it. Thirsty Thursday, you're 22, 21, whatever, fine. Um, just don't drive drunk. Like. Oh, they will. But, like, that's the thing. Now... They have had people in and out of that house, like, for a couple weeks. And I'm, like, like yesterday I was in our garage doing some work and, like, jewelry stuff. And I could hear at least, like, six to ten people in the garage. And their garage door was, like, down, but it was cracked open at the bottom. Mm -hmm. I could hear them, like, playing ping pong and, like, having a good old time. And I was, like, I am so Mm -hmm. fucking tired of this. Like, I almost called the cops. And I was just, like, dude, am I that person? But at the same time, I don't want those little jerk faces across the street to be responsible for any of our neighbors getting, like, sick. Or, like, we're in a neighborhood with people that are older. Mm -hmm. Like, our age and older. Right? your stinking young adult germs all over the place. Well, and that's the thing. You can be young adults. Cool. But like part of being an adult is understanding that we're dealing with like a serious global crisis right now and not being a dumbass. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't know. It's just one of those things. I feel very strongly about some of their behaviors, but I also don't want to be like uptight because I've been in their shoes. But yeah. then again, I was never in their shoes during a global pandemic. So I don't know what to do. You're like a back and forth. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. No, they shouldn't be having parties. I kind of just want to go over there and be like, who lives here? Like, who lives here? I, I think I've I have seen no I've seen the adults. The white truck is the adult, but yeah. he's not there very often. Yeah, and then there's a there's an older woman, too, which... She anyways. waves. She waves at me, and I'm like, I don't know you. Yeah. You don't know my life? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, before we, before we cut, I think we were talking about... Um, before the break, this break on mm-hmm. this podcast, right now, mm-hmm. we were talking about one of our other neighbors, and we were kind of... Talking a little shit. A lot of shit. <laughs> and he came. Then he walked by and was like, hey, guys. I'm hey, like, how's it going? Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hey, man, how are your parents? Because yeah. <laughs> we saw them doing your lawn earlier. So anyways, yeah, uh, I did something like that on Twitter. Um, <laughs> We're such jerks, dude. <laughs> um, so so there's, a, there's a Twitter story, which I'll bring up real quick. It's, it's kind of funny. Okay. Um, Somebody on Twitter, I've, I've been spending a lot of time on Twitter because I have a lot of time. You and the rest now, of the world. Now I have less time because my actual, I have to teach. I have to teach long distance now and I'm actually taking classes to finish my own, uh, my own degree. Yeah. So I have a little bit less time now, but last week I was spending a lot of time on Twitter. And uh, somebody tweeted out like, hey, it's okay to have mayonnaise on a hot dog. Fight me or something like that. Um, <laughs> Prove me wrong. <laughs> <laughs> fight me, like hot take, whatever it is, whatever the Twitter language is. Fight me. <laughs> um, and I, I just copy, like uh, quoted them and then retweeted it. And I was like, yeah, do whatever you want, America. Um, and then so Gio, shout out Gio. Uh, Brian has, and Gio made a podcast. Brian and Gio made a podcast. Although I don't know if they've made a podcast lately. but <laughs> I th- They have, yeah. Yeah. Um, but Gio is one of our one of our friends, and uh, we started going back and forth about like what's okay to be on a hot dog. And then I found this article <laughs> about um, what the the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council says that like ketchup is not okay, and like it was had all these like stri- strict guidelines of what's okay to put on a hot guidelines. dog. Uh, guidelines. And then we bro. it it's was like funny Nazi like hot dogism. And I was like, it was funny to us like because like what the hell is the National Hot Dog and Sausage <laughs> Council, and who is on this council? <laughs> And we were kind of talking shit a little bit about them. And then the president of the council <laughs> liked the tweet. And I was like, okay, this is like, what kind of bizarro world am I in right now? And also... He's probably um, just as bored as you are. I think both me and Gio felt a little bit bad for like... Because it was like a, it was like a human... It was like a face attached to... Dogging on the yeah, hot dog council president. Like we... It was just... There was no... But no face attached to the National Hot Dog and Sausage Council. And then like, oh, and then there's the president. Hey... Liked your tweet. But like Which just makes t- me think, like, he's probably sitting at his computer just searching National Hot Dog and Sausage, Sausage Council on Twitter, and that's what he's doing. They're probably trying to revamp. I mean, this is a really good time to <laughs> revamp that image right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. I wonder how hot dog sales are doing. You should ask. You should just ask him a direct question. Like, hey, man, 
what what is like the most bizarre hot dog topping that like the council approves of Mm -hmm. and then like ask him about the guidelines like literally dig into that like deep dive into that hot dog and sausage council (laughs) ask how to become a member Uh. do you remember when we were at the vfw once and i was really drunk and i was like how do i get to be a member (laughs) both of us were (laughs) dude and like we were getting like super like patriotic and stuff because we're sitting around all these old men who are patriots. I slow danced with an 85 year old man. And, and I think you smoked a cigarette that night. I don't even know. I'm not even a smoker. Like it's so weird. Yeah. I, it was at the VFW in Santa Fe, like Jeez. circa 2010. It was very know. emotional for both of us. I think we were both thinking about our grandparents. Yeah. Was, was your grandpa? Was your grandpa still living at that time? Mm, no, he had passed away that are year. Are you sure? He had passed we were away living in 2010. Santa Fe, right? Yeah. Huh. Um. Yeah, man. I don't know. I just, I just know I slow danced with an elderly man. Yeah, which and we was, were like signing a book. Like we we're like, oh yeah, I, we the were, membership book. Yeah, Anyways. I asked about membership. They gave me papers. I never filled them out. No, no. VFWs are kind of the shit, though. I mean, like yeah, open you, bar. Do whatever the hell you want there. I mean, literally. Yeah. Like it was like a 1940s like. I think we used to pay style for drinks, but. bar, but they're like way reduced. It was like a buck fifty for a beer, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like. They have a jukebox that's free, and they have a dance floor, and they have, like, popcorn. I mean, that's, that's like, when I'm old, you guys, you'll know where to find me. I'll be, I'll be at the VFW <laughs> in Palm Springs. I always say that. I'll, I'm going to Palm Springs. Hanging but, out with the old patriots? Oh, my God. No, 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 because they'll probably all be Trumpers at that point. Um, well, like I don't the know. good old days, and I'm like, The way I this pandemic go. is going, I think he might be losing a little support. Who knows? Uh-huh. We don't usually get in politics on this, but yeah, whatever. I don't. That man just needs to shut his mouth. <laughs> And take a long walk off a short pier. You know, I mean, that's kind of how I feel right now. Okay. Tie some rocks to his ankles. Maybe Whoa. he'll just never come back. <laughs> it's getting, getting pretty mobbish. It's getting dark. <laughs> Sleep with the fishes. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> so. So. So there's that. Yeah. Um, what else is going on in your life? My life. Well, you know, I mean, this is my life right now. I've been painting a lot of rocks. Yeah, we actually <laughs> left a rock in our neighborhood, and you had the idea of oh, painting these rocks and then like, spreading them out around the neighborhood and just kind of when people go on walks because a lot of people are going on walks, right? Yeah. Well, um, so I ordered these pens. They're like acrylic paint pens off of Amazon. They're glorious, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the kids and I have been like using those pens to just like paint designs on rocks because mm-hmm. we're bored. Okay. Like, I like art, but I don't want to have to, like, get out a bunch of paint and a bunch of canvases and make a huge-ass mess. That's not my thing. Mm-hmm. Painting rocks is simple. And yeah. it's fun. And so we've been painting them. And, like, yeah, we thought about putting them around the neighborhood and then, like, letting people see them as they walk. Just bringing a little joy. Yeah. I mean, Lorenzo and I, when we went to Silver City, we found this cool little rock. It's like a scavenger hunt rock. It has a... The flute man, like I don't know if you if you live in New Mexico or Arizona. Cocapelli. Cocapelli, yeah. Oh God. The flute man. Um, He's like the Native American god of fertility. People like it's not it's not what you think it is. Yeah. Quit putting that crap yeah. everywhere unless you want to have a bunch of babies. But thank you for putting it on the rock that we found. I mean, <laughs> maybe there's a bear on the other side. Bear on the other side, but I think these folks are from Texas. Mm. Um, anyways, they paint, from all over. they painted a rock and on the back of it, it says there's like their Facebook page. Mm-hmm. It's a really kind of a cool marketing thing, I guess, for them. So um, they paint the rock and then they seal it. They put a sealant on it. Yeah. So it's like not like a normal rock. It's like but there's a, a little, shiny sealed up rock. There's a little note like that's embedded in the rock on the back of it that mm-hmm. says, uh, it says, hide me somewhere else and post on Facebook. So somebody else can find it. Like it kind of just goes around sort of like a. Sort of like a, it reminded me of geocaching, geocaching, yeah. Where you would find these little capsules, and like sometimes there'd be a little scroll of do paper. Do you remember that being a thing? Is that still a thing? Do people yeah, do that? I think it is. We should I go think, geocaching today, bro. Well, uh, there are some apps, but you have to pay for them, like the really good ones. Stupid. Um, I don't know. We should go hide a bunch of geocaches around the city because we have nothing better to do. Probably has to be registered somewhere. I don't Never. know how it works. Anyways, on the back of this rock, <laughs> uh, it says like. Um, Hide me somewhere else or keep me, whatever it is. So, I don't know, maybe we so could So, I posted it on their Facebook page that we found it. And I was mm-hmm. like, hey, we found this little gem. And here's where we found it. And, like, everyone was all excited. <clears throat> and it was from Hanover, New Mexico, which is, like, this teeny, tiny little ghost towny kind of small town. Um, Can I so. go to Prodigy? Yes. How do I get there? <laughs> 
<laughs> wow. So yeah, so we had this cool little rock. We still have it. We're looking for a really cool spot to put it. And I think the idea is just that you, you know, you find it, you pick it up, you take it somewhere, you put it somewhere else, someone else finds it. It brings a little joy. It's kind of like a little nod to humanity in a weird way. Um, but that's kind of how this little idea of the rocks around our neighborhood started. Um, so we were talking about putting them all over the neighborhood and then we have neighbors next door. What up, Amanda? What up, Will? Hi, Sam. Hi, Wynn. Happy birthday, Wynn. Um, and their kids are the same age as us, as our kids. And, um, because we can't really hang out right now, we thought it'd be cool to take the rocks and put them around the neighborhood so that they can go on a walk and find them, you know, and then we can just take turns doing something like that. So anyway, something fun to do with the kids that is, uh, silly, but also something to do and creative at the same time and gives them a little tiny sense of purpose and connection, even though it's, it's small. Um, because it's been really hard. It's, it's been hard to keep these guys entertained. It's been hard to explain to them the, the weight of all of this stuff. Um, our seven-year-old kind of gets it, but it's still, I think, a little murky in some spots. And my three-year-old just doesn't understand, which I don't expect her to, obviously. And then our four-year-old is kind of starting to understand that things are different. And that's as far as it goes for him. He just knows that things are different. Um, so that's been kind of tough because it's like different levels of understanding and then trying to explain it, but also trying to make their days not depressing and, and meld together. So... Like we said, we bought a hammock and we have a sand table in the backyard and we did an Easter egg hunt yesterday with plastic eggs just to give them something exciting to do. So I'm gonna take a little pause and I will be right back. We're back. Um, oh. <laughs> Lindsay's painting a rock. So we're going to do some things today, activities with the kids uh, to kind of get them out, walking around. I think two days ago, we didn't even leave, leave the house once. It was so bad. Um, was... So yesterday, we just got in the car and we just drove around town just because we needed to get out. Yep. But anyways, that's what we're doing to kind of keep the, keep the sanity. Um, I feel like today, this sounds so bad, but I'm just like forget school I don't even care today yeah like with the whole like online I'm just like over it right now yeah. and I think they're going to be changing it the school district is going to be changing it and announcing mm -hmm. it tomorrow so I'm kind of like eh. yeah the district here is uh school district here is doing a lot of uh, online stuff uh, as are a lot of districts I'm sure um they're just not very organized yeah right now. well they're doing the best they can I think they're doing yeah. a good job no, they um, are. I just, it's just one of those things where I'm like, I know that things are going to change come tomorrow. So I'm sort of like, right. I'm, today doesn't seem like such an urgent yeah. thing. Nobody's right ever done this before. So it's kind of a hard thing to, to gauge, but shout out to all the Albuquerque teachers. You guys are doing great. Um, I'm an asshole. Sorry guys. No. <laughs> Me meetings with uh, teachers are not the easiest thing to do. Or to get any sort of consensus. Says the teacher. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been in I've been in a bunch of meetings where yeah. consensus is just not a thing. Right. Um, so it's it's hard. And if they can decide on one thing, like that is that is uh, a major milestone yeah, for the day. It's, it's a big deal. Yeah. All right. So You guys I have a confession to make. What? I downloaded Candy Crush. And Panda Pop, and I have been playing it nonstop, hmm. and I feel so dumb. But at the same time, it's so satisfying. It's a good story. Yeah, the end. All right, so I wanted to bring up one thing that I was sort of uh, throwing over in my head mm -hmm. the other day. Okay. Um, one of the authors... Sorry, that's my paint pen, guys. Yeah, Lindsay's, Lindsay's multitasking in mm -hmm. the background. Mm -hmm. You can kind of hear the brush against the rock anyways uh one of my one of my favorite authors or an author that i like uh jonathan Merritt. he's on twitter i follow him and he posted an article about um uh, samaritan's purse 
and how they're setting up that uh, tent hospital in Central Park. Yeah. Um, and when I heard about that, here comes a daughter. Mm. Um, okay. Well, you know what? We can talk about this later. No, it's not important. It. No, it's fine. It's not important. It's fine. It's we'll be important. back. We're back. Good um, lord, we're back. Made some breakfast. That's what we do. We kind of just live life and record, right? I guess. Um, These kids are insane. Yeah. You guys, uh, just our three-year-old just had a crazy meltdown just now. She threw a rock down mm -hmm. on the ground, like boom, and I was like, oh no. Okay, so I left them with a cliff tank cliffhanger oh, with uh, um, Samaritan's Purse. Oh yeah. So um, one of my favorite authors, Jonathan Merritt, he tweeted an article about Samaritan's Purse, they're setting up, or they have set up, and I'm not sure the status of it now. This it's was a like a field hospital. Yeah, this was like a week ago when they were setting it up. I don't. It's at it's the up time. And running now. Yeah, at the time they had didn't have any patients, and I think for, like by now they have patients and they're experiencing, um, you know, COVID patients coming through. Mm -hmm. But the article was pointing out, um, pointing out. Some of some of the concerns New Yorkers were having mm -hmm. with with Samaritan's Purse being set up in uh, in Central Park, which are valid concerns. Yeah. So I, the concerns. Yeah. What? I think they're valid concerns. Yeah. What are the concerns? Well, I think that they're concerned that it's it's supposed to because it is a religious organization. Their efforts are yes focused on treating people, but like. They're worried that it's going to be used as an evangelical tool rather than just a hospital. Mm -hmm. So the focus turned in this discussion, this Twitter discussion that I was on, around uh, the statement of faith, I guess, that the organization um, makes their uh, nurses and doctors and any, any, any hired uh, staff, I guess, to sign. Mm -hmm. And the statement of faith basically says that you'll adhere to these like core beliefs like Jesus is the son of God um, the Bible is literal um, homosexuality is a sin if you don't accept Jesus you're gonna go to hell like that's that's that in a nutshell but they want to help people well they well they are helping people that's that's where like this I, um, this torn kind of feeling comes like they are genuinely helping people and I think I saw a little a, a video of one of the doctors kind of describing the situation inside the this uh, makeshift hospital mm -hmm. and they're doing a great deal of help like new york is being obliterated by this yeah. by this uh virus like they are by far the hardest hit state I the guess... hardest hit region in the country and they need all the help they can get like of they course. need they need them but there's a problem with like there was a problem that like when I when I commented on this like chat, I have a problem with healthcare workers being forced to sign um, a, a, a statement saying that you know what I mean. Like I don't. No, I do too. Because if you want to help people, help them. It has nothing to do with your with what your faith is, because you're going to be helping people that don't believe in the same mm -hmm. things you do. So what difference does it make? If right. your workers are quote unquote Christians or not, like if you want to help people, then help people like put your money where your mouth is. Right. Don't make people sign a statement of faith because that's counterproductive to what you're actually doing. Right. So anyways, I, I had some issues with that and it, it kind of had my, my wheels turning and a lot of people were commenting on this Twitter thread that like they're helping, they're doing good. Um, it doesn't matter who's helping as far as long as they're like reaching out and helping out people. But and then I, again, and I, it wouldn't matter if you signed a statement of faith either. Like, why yeah. would you make people do that? And I, I, I get that too. Like, but the one like thing that I had, a, I don't know, I, I try to flip things. It angers me. Sorry. I try to flip things and I'm thinking like, what, what, if, what if I needed health care and somebody st signed a statement saying uh, some, some different belief, like a belief that was not consistent with my own, like, 
So? Um, like, how would I feel about that? I'd feel fine with it because they're giving no, no, their let, time and energy to help. I don't think... Okay, so let me try to explain myself better. Okay. What if Sorry. I needed health care and there's an organization that, that had to sign some statement saying that whatever something about me they believed was wrong or immoral? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. How would I feel? That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I, that's, I think we're trying to say the same thing. Uh, um, <laughs> so anyways, that's just but that's, kind of throwing that out there. Well, that's like, I mean, can you imagine if you were somebody who's like a gay person and you know that they have had to sign this statement of faith and you're like, cool, you're helping me through coronavirus, but you think I'm going to hell. Like, that would be really hard to deal with. And that would be really like sad for you. Yeah. And then I would also be like, why, why, what's the point of you helping me if you just think I'm going to hell? Like, what's mm -hmm. your agenda here? Right. You know, I think that that's, I would be questioning that. Yeah. I don't know. I, I try to see both sides of certain things and certain, you know, they, they, they are a Christian organization. Like they're a faith organization. Yeah. Like every faith organization, I guess, is going to want to have people of that faith, I guess, serve with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. But also, but although, like, I don't know if, like, the JCC, the Ju the Jewish Community Center here in Albuquerque, I don't know if I, I don't know if they make you sign a statement saying like I'm I'm Jewish. No, they don't. Um, or and I know that for a fact. Yeah. Because I so, interviewed them for the other podcast. They don't make right. you sign a statement of faith. Like, I want they're I, inclusive and they're open to anybody who wants to join. Right. I wonder. I wonder if like statements of faith are exclusive to like evangelical churches. Because I, I guess if you're if you're in an organization, well, you don't want somebody to kind of just come in and rabble rouse just because just because, right? Right. But at this, I don't know. I don't. But I guess I'm just as, asking the question. I think the thing is too, like evangelicism. Evangelicalism. Mm -hmm. I can't say the word, but has always been exclusive rather than inclusive. So, of course, they're going to make people, like, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Whether it's right or wrong, they're always going to make people do that because it's a, it's a primarily exclusive religion, and it always has been, in the United States especially. Right. Which is, is sad. That is sad, too, because for me, that I, I have always felt, there's a Cessna flying right over us. Yeah. Um, I have always felt that Jesus... Um, like, <laughs> yeah, I felt like he was incredibly inclusive. He was. Like, everybody is welcome. Yeah, no, he, he was. I mean, he yeah. ate with sinners and prostitutes, and those were people that culturally were excluded. Yeah. So it's a little annoying that the American church still thinks that they have a right to be uppity about what they do and how they do it. Right. Like, you're not better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. so. I also don't think it's for us to decide. Like, someone's like immortal fate <laughs> no it's not up to me to be like hey you're going to hell like right. that's not my business it's not my job to decide that i don't know them personally mm -hmm. um it's not up to me to condemn people so i don't know stuff like that really grinds my gears yeah and i don't think there'll ever be any sort of like agreement on that like i don't know yeah probably not which is yeah. too bad well, I think it's also too bad for the American church because they're missing out on a lot of really amazing people, like being a part of something. But, you know, that's bad on them, I guess. Right. So. All right. Got that out of my system. <laughs> Me too. What are you listening to? I don't know. Um, not a lot right now. I just I just finished the um, game show killer, the dating game killer podcast, which was good. It was a little mini series podcast. Um, I've been listening to it while I've been walking the academy um the spooked podcast has some new episodes out so i'm really excited about that that's a favorite of mine so i listened to one of the episodes yesterday which was a really good one really enjoying that as always <laughs> really that's it i mean haven't listened to too much music lately i've just been busy with kids unfortunately for me i'm sorry i'm really into this coloring rocks right now you know Wait, Everybody. you're just, like, holding that in my face. Like, what do you want me to say? We're, I was just listening to what you were listening to. That's all I'm... I mean, I really haven't been listening to anything crazy. Like, I... Honestly. Okay. 
All right, I am listening to a couple more podcasts. Um, I have more time, so I've been able to kind of listen in. Um, one podcast I listened to, one podcast podcast episode I listened to was a local one, and it is... Um, I need to listen to that, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, City on the Edge. Um, they did an episode on disease in, in New Mexico, and it was really interesting. They get really deep into the history. Uh, the hosts are very knowledgeable. On, They're very well informed about like history, which I like. Yeah, specifically New Mexico history mm-hmm. and Albuquerque history, but they talked a lot about um, tuberculosis in in New Mexico and we, how we were like a refuge. They talked about the Spanish flu. Um, they talked. They talked about a um, couple of other diseases that um, hit Albuquerque and you know how how we handled it and how it affected us. Fun As fact, a state. the Spanish flu is called the Spanish flu not because it originated in Spain, but because Spain was the first country to actually acknowledge that there was a, like a epidemic and a pandemic going on. Hmm. So they were like the front runners in that. It's interesting. Yeah. Uh, so I've been listening. I, I listened to that episode. It was really great. Um, I, I've still been listening to the small things often. They're like little less than five minute clips about like marriages and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. That's a good one. Um, what else? What else have I been listening to? Uh, I listened to a really great episode of The Verge Cast. Um, Mm -hmm. It has Dieter Bonn. I don't know anything about this. You you were making fun of his name last week. Oh, that's right. I was like, Dieter Bonn. (laughs) Yeah. Um, Because I'm a grown-ass woman, uh, and I mock people. (laughs) That's what I do. Yeah. Uh, The Verge Cast is a a podcast from The Verge, which is a tech uh, press company. They write articles about what's happening in Sorry. tech. Um, but this episode, they went into the nitty gritty of zoom and how it's like basically exploded in popularity because of the coronavirus. Uh, they talked about the security holes in zoom. Yeah, um, which there are. they talked about, uh, the, the status of other, uh, video chat platforms like Skype and, and FaceTime. And, uh, what else is there? Uh, Google, Google meet, um, or hangouts meet. However, it's branded. Never, nobody ever knows with Google stuff. Uh, but it was very interesting. If you're into tech, that's what I've been listening to. That um, concurs with you. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody used all the black ink, and I'm really sad about it. What? Somebody used all the black ink, and I'm sad about it. Oh. All right. So there's Sorry. that. Uh, I also listened to. Um, I, I got back into a podcast. I listen. I've I've been a fan of for a long time, but I kind of gave them a break. Uh, it's how that's a how stuff works podcast, um, and they did a really interesting episode on the the dark web, and uh, the dark web, and then what what else was it? I get so creeped out by dark web podcasts, like so creeped out. Well, okay, so there's two. There, there, so there's the the deep web, I guess. Mm-hmm. There's the deep web, right? And the dark web. Yeah. The dark web is inside of the deep web, yeah, and the I deep web like is the deep web. The deep web. I think that's the terminology. The deep web is not all bad. The deep web is stuff that is stored on the internet that can't just be found on a search engine. And they like they, if I want to buy a monkey. Um. Yeah, I guess you can find that on the deep web. Mm-hmm. That might be considered part of the dark web, though, yeah, like maybe. exotic animals. So I can start another pandemic. Yeah. Just kidding. That's um, not cool. <laughs> yeah. Like Twenty-eight days later. Um. So it was a really, really fascinating podcast and they just have, they're just really, they're kind of funny, like in this kind of, uh, I don't know. You're like in this off-putting way. (laughs) No, they kind of are. Like they're a little bit awkward. They're just kind of nerdy. Awkward people are my favorite. They, they make, they're funny jokes. (laughs) I don't know. They're, they're great. I don't even know their names right now off the top of my head, but it's called this How Stuff Works podcast. Doesn't even matter. You guys are great. Nope. Um, as far as music is concerned i have um been listening to let's see i've been listening to i was listening to a new album and i can't remember what it was i don't know this is i don't know (laughs) came over no idea um i've been listening to a lot of records listening to a lot of records because um we got a new record player Uh our old record player wasn't really working that great so i got a new one and um I've been listening to the Band of Horses album. A lot. Kind of a lot. Um, I've been listening to uh, 
What else have we been listening to on the record player? Uh, a lot of Elton John, surprisingly. Elton John, yeah, it's there. Band of Horses. Um, Band of Horses. Uh, oh, what was the one? Um, the Who. The Who, yeah. I don't know. Paul McCartney. Yeah. Solo projects. And then also, um, Ugly Organ. Um, oh, Cursive, yeah. Cursive. We've had that album Always for a, a while. Always a classic. And Cursive, I have to be in the mood for Cursive. Because a lot of their sounds are very kind of kind of dissonant. dissonant. Um, if you're a type four enneagram like myself, that's like you're like this is my soul. <laughs> or a nine, I guess. <laughs> Anyways, that is all. I don't know. Uh, I think we're we gonna might, finish need, the podcast listening to new markers Lindsay here. Color a Rock. Well, the thing is, I'm out of ink. Like I'm very sad right now because game over. I need more ink. You should color letters. your phone case. Make it colorful. Nah, because then I'd have to breathe in the fumes every time I use it. Oh, well, dry. Ugh, no. All right. So it's been good. It's been guys, real. Uh, it's been real good. Enjoy the rest of your week. Who knows? We'll have another one soon. Enjoy your um, quarantine. Should I time. mention our plan on other stuff? No. No? Okay. No, not yet. Uh, check out our YouTube channel not if you time. are bored. Um, we have a YouTube channel. It's, um, it's you- terrible, like we said. It's terrible. Yeah, but you can see our faces. Does that Sorry. ever ruin it? Does that ever ruin it for you? Like when you like listen? When I see what someone looks like. Yeah. Yeah. Because you you picture what somebody looks like based on their face, and I think that nobody ever. There's times where I'm like, oh, that's not what I. Oh. Yeah, and then you, and then you stop listening to the podcast. Uh-uh. Like uh, I don't like how you look anymore. <laughs> I don't like how you look. No, it's just always like it's just never how I picture it. Yeah. It's always like it's not disappointing necessarily. It's just like oh, that's not at all what I thought it was like. <laughs> And then it's like the the image in my brain is shattered. And so it's just hard to listen because the whole time you're sitting there thinking about what they don't look like. Right. That you, I mean, or what they do look yeah. like. And you thought. So if you want to keep that mystery, them. don't look at our podcast. We don't really have that great of content yet. So <laughs> might not be worth it. Yeah. Don't look at our faces. If it will disappoint you, don't look. But, Shut your eyes. Avert your eyes. But if you want to, check out our YouTube. It's a. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, don't do it. And you're like, yeah, check it out. YouTube, YouTube.com slash parenting versus podcast, I think. Or just search it's, parenting. I'll, I'll link I, it in the I show Can I side notes. note something real quick? Sure. It's like crazy how many listeners we actually have. So thank you guys for listening. This, I mean, like, I just wanted to say this. This started out as a serious side project with no intent of going to do anything other than just talk about our silly little lives. Kind of still is. And... We have way more listeners than I could have ever anticipated. So thanks for sticking it out with us. I mean, it's not always riveting, but it's life. And uh, it's nice to know someone's listening, (laughs) even if we don't know you. So thank you for that. Thanks for giving us some of your time because it does matter. And say hi if you want to. Yeah, please do. We have a website, Mm -hmm. blogspot.com slash parenting vs podcast i think i'll also link that we don't ever really use it but (laughs) it's there i'll link that in our show notes as well yeah so thanks for listening it's it's nice to know that you guys listen it's nice to know that you care um it's nice to know that you give us some of your time when you do listen so we appreciate it we're in this parenting struggle together or just life struggle who knows yeah a little bit of both so all right guys we're out be safe be well talk to you soon